Hi there, everybody. This is Mark Bromley, author and artist of the Uranthium book series. And today I am going to show you the creation of Dresdai through uh, Chat GPT, Doll E3, and uh, Copilot. Beginning with just a general description of uh, what Dresdy's basic form actually is. It came up with a pretty good idea, a pretty good image that uh, mimics kind of what I'm going for, but it wasn't 100% correct. It was actually kind of diabolical, looks a little evil and stuff like that, but Dresdy is a much more complicated character uh, throughout the book series. That uh, the first book just kind of introduce her, introduces her kind of as the big bad. But is she? Well, to find out for what her story arc actually is, you're going to have to get the Uranthium book series. However, you know, in the first drafts, we were kind of getting this kind of ink black lines on her forehead and things like that. And uh, we had a basic understanding going there, but that's not exactly what she looks like. So um, here in AI, this is how you can tell that they're using stock photos because this particular person here is a famous person known for anorexia, and uh, they did actually copper, copy her face straight off. So yeah, I guess it kind of ended up being Dresdai right there, and um, that's not who she really is in real life. But you can tell that they're just using stock images and pasting and clipping images together through a... Uh, Collage. Collage work is a valid form of art, and uh, whether it's using magazines or using online media, it's pretty much the same deal. It's kind of uh, uh, what a young artist gets into, a lot of collage, because uh, it's difficult to uh, imagine an image and then to draw that image from your own imagination, because trying to get the pose down is always difficult. And that's why you get a lot of turn facial features. Uh, usually straight on to s a couple of side views. Uh, that tends to be very common for a lot of uh, uh, fledgling artists. And uh, AI is uh, not a stranger to fledgling art. And it's pretty obvious that that's actually the case, that it's just very, it's just beginning at the rudimentary levels. And uh, we go with this, and it's coming up with all sorts of its own little words based on English and uh, twisting it a little bit to, yeah, trying to capture that sinister imagery with the earrings. And here's the long neck again, the over-exaggerated neck. And the exaggerated ears, the ears are much too big for my designs. Um, but this is me describing it to AI, and AI still has to understand uh, proper perspective, even when it's talking about fantasy ears, because uh, it goes a little bit more goblinoid than actually elf-like uh, in its creation. And here we are. We modified the search algorithm to get a little bit more uh, detailed. Uh, her hair is chromatic, so it looks like a rainbow. There's many different colors inside her hair, and it's it's whitish, and it has many different colors in it. And she's pale and uh, wears red uh, revealing dresses, and, and she likes that kind of imagery uh, because of her nature and the depth of her character, which is actually explained much later as to who she really is and what's really going on with her. Because she is from the third founding, a lustrum. She is a wizardry sister, a sorcerer, comparable to Thernia. As a matter of fact, Dresdai and Thernia know each other, and you'll find that out in the book series. And you're probably wondering if she's from a lustrum, why is she so pale? Well, no spoilers on that one. You'll have to find out later. And uh, why people want to be what they really aren't instead of what they really are. Yeah, a lot of people fantasize about being something more because they live in a world that is uh, somewhat disappointing. The world that they truly live in is not the ideal world for their condition. And because of that, they start to manifest imaginary perceptions of themselves. If they were this or if they were that, would they have a better life? Would they get more attention? Would they have more fame? 
a lot of people want to struggle for that, so they would actually twist and distort their own images just to become what they think would make them look more significantly better for one reason or another. And that's where we get into a lot of false identities, uh, people ident trying to identify themselves with various different name titles that are not true, not accurate, and uh, they get upset about it and uh, why we end up with certain cases within our modern politics. And uh, one of the most famous cases is the current situation going on with uh, J.K. Rowling and, uh, and an individual who wants to identify as something they truly biologically are not. But there you have it. There you have some of that little twistingness in there. And could Dresde be representative, a representation of that kind of imagery? It's a possibility. And uh, it's a really deep story. I mean, at the first book, in the first book, Lost Hope, you're not actually seeing the real image of what's really going on. Why the uh, why Dresdai is a very complex entity within the Uranthium book series. You'll have to find out about that by getting the first book, helping me get that published, then publishing book two, three, and so on and so forth, because she's a recurring character. And uh, by the end, there is going to be a drastic reveal about her significance to the story and how she ended up in her uh, in this uh, twisted form and shape from what she was before. And I think you're going to love that story because it's a quite an interesting reason for why she becomes what she is. Of course, uh, we're getting a little bit too bold with the chromatic hair. It's not really shifting and changing because it's supposed to shift. It's actually supposed to shift more. Uh, and this is just getting too mm, straight out dyed like. And, uh, and so the AI is struggling a little bit in actually trying to cover the images. Uh, and then it gets really artsy on this one. But it's very close because this is when I started talking about making it dark. The uh, portal that she's coming out of is actually dark. It has light, it has luminous features to it, but it's really dark. And um, it's kind of like ink-like with light coming through it, but it was difficult for it to actually figure out the two separate images. And uh, this is where I have to come in as an artist and actually just uh, work with what I kind of got. The ears are still wrong, incorrect. Uh, the neck is too long. Uh, it, it's a very interesting idea. I mean, it does have nice facial makeup. I didn't think about it first, and uh, it added that element. But she is still a little bit too uh, flesh-colored, to, you know, toned out to actually be the image that she's supposed to be in this image. And then we get this image, where it's a lot darker and stuff, and her hair is still a little kind of wicked. The ears are very long. Like I said, I don't think the AI can do it any other way. I think when it says elf, that's what it thinks. And it just keeps doing that. Although the red dress is almost the way that I illustrated it in the uh, first book. That's getting there. Um, it has sleeves, and the one in the book does not have sleeves, but it's getting closer. So we are making uh, advancement in the imagery of uh, what Dresd I actually ends up looking like. And we can see that we've really got this is where the rainbow portal was actually more active. And uh, you can see the fantasy elements being added into this by the AI. I think there's like a floating eyeball in the bottom right down here. And uh, that's what it looks like, a little eyeball. Anyways, uh, there you go. And uh, and it's getting the tighter outfit, and it's starting to look like her. Uh, it's not exactly there yet, and uh, I don't think we're ever going to get a good good enough image. So uh, here's the dark thing. They mirrored the image in the back, so that's pretty nice. You can see the back of the head as well as the front of the head. And uh, it's creating an interesting positions and stuff like that as far as, like, if I was to augment the book covers, would I actually use these images or would I change certain things about certain other elements? There's a possibility of that. Um, and uh, I like the way that this vortex turned out a little bit more back because that's her portal. She 
just snaps these things up and out of thin air and there's a reason for it and uh, I haven't explained that at all why they have these kind of magics and they're called magics because some of it is technologically based some of it is actually just magic some of it's miracles type stuff and uh, well it all has uh, an actual reason for the way it works and uh, we'll just move on and uh, we can see another image here um, of course, she'd probably change her looks multiple times, but we're getting too much. She looks too alive in this picture. Uh, she's supposed to look a little bit more uh, ghostly. Her appearance more uh, pale, but she's not. And I know you guys still remember that she's from Illustrum. She's from the third founding. And, uh, well, nobody from the third founding is ever actually this pale. But she is. But there's a reason for that. And uh, here we go, another uh, decent enough image. This is decent enough. This is getting better. This is getting quite good. And I think we're almost reaching the uh, final pictures of the Desdre series that uh, we created with the AI. And it gave me some really good definite ideas of how to go with the images. Uh, we got another image here where they put a lot of flowers in her hair, and I guess she could decorate that way. She does. She does. She's part of the Oyran Deutschu book cover that's on book two that I created recently, um, where she's basically, uh, well, she's, I can't give you the spoilers yet. You're going to have to just get the first book so you can look forward to the book of Gentry so you can actually see what it is that she's actually become and what she's turning into there. And uh, that's a very long dress, and I suppose, uh, well, she does wear kimonos and things like that, and she has the little uh, artistry of the tied-off bow in the front kind of to give pictures and scenic sights of uh, the imagery of the whole pageantry of the building that goes on within this uh, book series. And now this is an actual pretty decent picture. I like this one. This is a this is another good one with her hair being a little bit wild and blown about, which is uh, probably one of her more infuriated states of being. And uh, and she has those claw-like daggers coming out, in her hands. and uh, it, it's actually a pretty good image as far as being one of the one of the serious nemesis figures throughout the book series and uh, with a fantastic backstory that uh, you, I, I know you're going to love it when you actually get to the point where some of the reveals start to, be, start to begin about her story when where she comes from and how she got there and why she would sacrifice everything that she believed in for a future that she had hoped to, to survive. Well, anyways, it's her nature. And this is the best one that we got out of the ChatGPT, Doll E3, and the uh, Copilot AI rendered pictures based on my descriptions and my working to get them to understand what I was going for. I mean, the, the portal is still a little bit too bright, but it's starting to look a little darker, like the portal I just showed you earlier that I created. It's starting to get there. So it's starting to form up in that pattern. And then her uh, chromatic hair really jumps forward here. It actually really comes out a lot more clearly. Uh, what type of uh, chromatic hair we're talking about, it's getting closer to that. And it is about the right length. It's, uh, it's as long as it's supposed to be. And uh, yeah, it just gives her that wicked kind of look. And uh, the ear although too long, can be easily shortened and put into proper perspective. And uh, the neck isn't too bad. It's supposed to be long and lengthy because she is kind of a very thin figure. But the skin tone is still a little bit too uh, fleshed out where it's supposed to be a lot more pale. And uh, and you'll see why. And it'll, it'll explain the whole entire story. Uh, to the point that you'll actually understand the effects of what Drezzy is. Now, she is the counterpart to Thernia. And why is Thernia so different than her? Well, that's also part of the story. 
why are they still alive at the same time? Because you'll probably realize that these two have been around for an incredibly long time. But it's all within the book, the book of Euranthium. So get Euranthium Lost Hope and uh, help me get uh, Book of Gentry out there, get the Land of the Potentate out there. And we'll go from there so you can actually see how much world building goes into this whole entire effort and how complex these uh, characters become through the evolution of the uh, book series and where it all takes place to because there's still other characters we have not introduced you to and I think I'm going to have to show you the images for Rel Relmir that came from the AI because you know within that four or five hour period I was uh, I brainstormed a lot of different ideas so I came up with a bunch of pictures and characters all at once. So there's Rel Relmir. We have Bronames to talk about. We have Hespesia to talk about. And we still have uh, quite a few characters to mull over about their appearances and their images and how this all goes together. As you can see, the uh, sea elves themselves are incredibly vibrant and brilliantly created characters that when they translate eventually to film and movies and they actually get the correct scaling down that they the actual fish scales that it is their skin that makes their skin feel like anybody else's skin look like anybody else's skin and how it actually reflects sunlight it's actually kind of like a protective device for the sea elves it's kind of like how they camouflage themselves in the ocean uh, that's why they're uh, they were they're very special in that kind of creation. And then you see the mainland elves are actually monotoned in skin color. Uh, they come from very specific parts of the continent. There's like three continents, three main continents. I guess you can divide it into like maybe 15 continents across this whole entire world of Nizhermont. There's a whole bunch of them. And uh, they have a whole bunch of different territories and kingdoms. Uh, there's like the three known kingdoms, uh, and then there's a whole bunch of additional kingdoms that became known a little bit later that no one understands how they exist. But isn't that the way the world actually goes? When you're actually from a certain place, you only think about that one place. And uh, the rest of the world is not as large, doesn't exist, unless you've traveled there or gone there. Then you start to see a bigger world. It's the same as on Ijermat and how that all came to be. And, and that's the difference between all these uh, characters and uh, even the mainland elves that even though they may have only a monotone color of skin, they're very vibrant people with uh, quite huge and gigantic backgrounds. And uh, I think when you start putting all these images together and you're starting to imagine this when, while you're reading the book because you're trying to figure out exactly how the characters are being described and how they're looking, they sound unique. They sound different. They are. They're meant to be different because um, that's a message within the book series. And uh, that's uh, something that you can actually take a look at because it will give you room for growth. And so the first book does actually deal with some pretty hardcore topics. I should know. I had some crazy people uh, attack me through the Cult of Woke already because of they don't understand what's going on in my book series. And uh, it's because they've been in a cult. They're working in a modern political cult created by the malaise in the harm and the damage that sociology, psychology, and uh, other fake sciences have been concocting for the last century because, you know, they've only been in our schools for a century, but they were failed philosophies. There was a reason why Socrates and Aristotle did not do anything with those uh, philosophies until the 20th century rolled around because that's where a bunch of terrible leaders wanted power, wanted to create the false religions of government. And um, we'll talk more about that in the Euranthian book series. So please go help me out, get the Euranthian book series. As you can see, the characters that I create are fantastic. They're wonderful. Uh, if we ever make it into a movie, it's going to be a fantastic uh, series, a fantastic movie series. 
and uh, well, I, I tell you right now, there's probably like 30 books in the series already being planned, and uh, that is a lot of information to go over as far as how large this uh, this uh, concept of the Urantium book series actually is. So thank you very much. This is Drasdai. I'm going to probably create Realmure next, and then we're going to have Bronanes, and then we're going to bring in Hespesia and Setoria, and uh, we're going to bring in a few other characters as well, and we'll start talking about all that and the art artistry going through, because I, I'm sure you guys want to know what the cities are going to look like and what the architecture is going to look like. I've been working with ChatGPT to capture some of those images as well, which is helping me to formulate my ideas as well, because, you know, my mind's pretty good by itself, but a little bit of input uh, from other sources is helpful in actually uh, bringing that into a bigger, better perspective of the Urantium book series while I'm creating these pages, while I'm writing the books and creating these in impressive cities and uh, impressive lands to go visit. And uh, the adventure begins, and it's just incredible. Actually, I think the Urantium book series is going to really really turn your crank. So uh, yeah, join me. Get the book. Go to my website, uranthiumbromley.com. Get the Uranthium book series. Uh, help out my art. Get the t-shirts. Whatever you can do to help me out, that'd be great because that's the direction that we need to go in so we can actually start getting uh, more and more material uh, created. So you can get the early creation material. Uh, and as the book series evolves, you'll get higher quality material later. And then you'll have the first stuff. You'll have the very first primer stuff at the beginning. And you'll have this, you'll see how a, how a wonderful story begins from beginning to end is created. You don't have to hypothesize about it. You don't have to guess because you know the artist himself. You've been talking to him and you've been watching him on YouTube since he started out the book series. And, uh, go. Well, you all have a great day. You have a lot of fun, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you very much.